A lot of new people play Timber Room every single day and they, just like me, make mistakes. That's pretty normal and after playing over 100 hours, I thought I would make a video about the mistakes new players make and what to do instead. When you start a new world, there are a lot of buildings that need to be built, there are a lot of food that needs to be collected and of course there's a lot of logs that need to be cut down. If you stay on 16 hour workday, it's not 100% sure that you will manage the toll and also prepare for the drought. So my suggestion here is for you to actually just increase the working hours to about 20. So let's start here. First, we're gonna have some lumberjack flags, a few of these nearby. We're also gonna have some gatherer flags here as well. And of course, water pump right down here. Now, this is really important. If you let workers or beavers work 20 hours for many days and many seasons, actually, if you only let them work about six or seven days, there will be big consequences. And that is, they will get more and more tired for each day, so they will work a lot slower and less efficient. And of course, their health will decrease, which will make them die sooner than necessary, which is kind of sad when we don't want that. We want them to live as long as possible, which is both good for them and for us. So my recommendation here is have it at 20 hours and after four or five days, turn it back down to 16. That should be enough for you to get a good quick start, but also keep your beavers somewhat happy in the first season. Tip number two is how to prepare for the first drought. So for most of us, the first drought comes from nowhere. We're not ready for that. And we don't really know what that means. Well, you see, on this map, the water starts right here. And when the drought season comes, there is no more water and the whole world looks like this. So you see these trees? Well, they are dead and nothing grows on them. Nothing grows on the dirt like this. So this is dead land. The green land here is the good stuff. And for that, we have to be very quick with food and water. So we do have some berries, but we have to remember, berries are very good for start, but not good actually for the rest of the gameplay because it, ta it takes them 12 days to grow for only three berries. And we have something a lot better which is efficient farmhouse. Now let's go to efficient farmhouse, something like that. Let's get a road to one of them. Now check the time. We are in day two. So now first we have to build our farmhouse. After that, the farmers who live here will have to actually plant each and single one of the plant crops. So that takes time. First, it takes time to build the farmhouse. Then it takes time to uh, plant all the crops it takes days for the crops to grow and then you can eat but only carrots and raw potato needs to be grilled so here we have recipe and grilled potato now all of this takes a couple of days if you start when you're empty of food then there will be problems because you will be something like seven eight days maybe and your beavers will be really hungry and some might even starve so be ready for the food then we have water so far our water pump is enough there is no problem with it the issue is we have very very little uh, water reserve only 15 and that will disappear within a day what we have to do is actually build water tanks so now the cheapest one is small tank and i would recommend having two that should be enough for the first drought tip number three four i don't know where we are so as you probably understand by now water is a really really important thing here and being able to control the water is even more important so now imagine what this area would look like if we didn't have water here i'm gonna tell you it looks exactly like this no difference so what you can do is go down to the landscaping go into the dam and build a dam right down here something like this and what the dam does is actually creates a small lake small dam right here and it will be until the water is up about 80 percent of the height then the rest will be released and water will flow all the way down here and how this helps us is when the water stops pumping up here we will always have some water down here that will keep the water moisturized and green and our trees and crops will be able to grow without an issue during drought period that's the important part the next tip is make sure your beavers are actually working 
You see these three? So right now there is no more berries to be picked. And all my gather flags workers are just sitting down here. Which is really, really unnecessary. So what you can do here is pause these buildings. There is no reason for them to work right now. And they will go and find a different job. So for me right now, some will go into the farming house. Which is what we actually need. And somebody will actually start to work and build more uh, of the tanks. Now of course... There will be times where you need more people, more beavers. So what do you do then? Well, for folktales, it's really simple. You go into the, into the housing and you have a few lodges. You need some you need to unlock, but let's use the basic ones. And here we can actually build them, something like this. And you can see here on the side, we have 12 beds that are occupied and three free beds. What this means is max, we can have 15 beavers. If we want more beavers, well, we actually have to just build more houses. So something like this. And now we have 12 beds that are free. And our max is raised to 24 max beavers. And if you play iron beavers, it's a bit different. To breathe iron beavers, you need to build a breathing pod. That is a leisure building that needs water and blueberries to create iron beavers. And that will create a beaver every five days. So slightly different. The next tip is... And I know this doesn't really make sense when you think about beavers, but science is really important here. Now look at this. If we go into the woods and we look at a few of the buildings here, they you see the red lock button right down here. That means it's locked, you can't build it just now. And you also see that it costs 60 science points to unlock it. So how do you get science points? You go into the science right here and you see inventor. The building looks like this and let's place a few of them right here now i'm using mod so it's instant build but that's gonna take a few minutes to get done and this is what it looks like so each one of these needs one beaver and for each hour the beaver is working here it will generate one science point i usually have them on a lower priority and what that means is if there is no work the beavers will go straight to the inventor and work there instead so it's really nice and of course, there is a lot of structures that need science points. Simple stuff like stairs and then platforms. Some cost, as you see, 70 science points. Other cost 3000 science points. It's all over the place. And starting early is really helpful, especially as you see here. We don't have much uh, forest left, so few of them are growing. But soon they will all be cut down. And what we need is a forester which cost 60, 60 science points. The next tip I'm going to show you is how to control water even more. So we built the small dam right down here, which is perfect. It will serve us plenty, but there is more we can do. So for example, this area right here, what we can do is have levees and just create a small platform like this or of a wall and then have a triple floodgate. Now this is a big example so you know what i actually mean have it like this this and block off all the water now the triple flood gate is only at two and a half height what that means is when water is filled up to two and a half everything above it will overflow to our area so now we have one major water reserve right here as you see and down here a smaller one that's more useful for us okay this is filling up pretty quickly so very soon we'll see water overflowing, which is just what we want. There we go. And water. And here we have the dry season. So this is what it looks like. And as you can see, all of this area is still very, very green. There is very little water overflow right now because the most, most of the water is actually has stopped pumping. And if we look down here, everything is pretty much as normal for us. The trees are green. The potato is growing. Farmers are working water is being pumped now i sped things up a bit but as you can see we have very little water left which is not good for us so we, what we can do is actually go to our big floodgate remove the synchronize with other floodgates and just lower this one in the middle by a half now it's only on height two and see slowly it will start dropping water let's speed things up a bit and let's fill out our little area right here see water is going up slowly slowly and that's actually what we wanted we don't want to just pump out a bunch of water it will create chaos right in this area it will overflow and when you think that's enough you can just raise it and no more issues 
Now, I mentioned before that we have the green land and the dry land, and there is one big thing here that you can prepare for, and that is have all your farms, forests, and all the things that grow on your green land, because you don't have much of it. If you look, most of it is dead land. Every side, there is dead land. So the idea here is to, for you to actually build all the woodworking factories, metal factories, power stuff, all of that, on the grey land and that's because they will work just fine over here so why not use it for something and then have all this nice grey green area for the forest and stuff and for the last tip beavers don't really need much to work and survive they need some food they need some water and a bed to sleep but with few things you can make them really really more efficient and more alive let me show you if we go into the well-being you see there are, there are a bunch of stuff stuff here some are for socialization so we have campfire if we build it nearby our beavers will visit campfire hang out and that will improve their life expectancy by 10 20 up to 30 percent so you have rooftop terrace that does exactly the same thing it needs to be placed on the rooftop so one thing our beavers really love is spending time in the water and for that we have showers and also lido so they will during the day they will come here wet their fur and feel a lot more better a lot, a lot refreshed and then for the health we have few things we have teeth grinder which is always good to have and also medical bed if they get sick they can just stay there refresh chill feel better and get back to work instead of being forced to work with an injury and then die shrine is a really popular one as well they get in the shrine i don't know what they do but it makes them feel good and that's important. It's the important thing. Let's see them relax in the Lido. As you see, they are living the big life here. So this guy is on well-being 12, which means he has working speed of 20% plus. He has movement speed of 15% plus and life expectancy of 20% plus. So overall, he is working like, well, 1.2 people, which is amazing for us. That's what we want, which is such a small addition to the area they are working a lot better which is definitely worth it in the long run and those were the tips if you learn something new today subscribe and if you want to teach someone something comment below i'm sure i have missed a bunch of stuff but these felt like the most necessary thank you and see you next time